A fraternity yes. at the University of Mississippi has been shut down after three members hung a noose around the neck of a statue of James Meredith, who was the school's first ever black student. Uh, Pre-2003 Georgia State flag featuring the Confederate battle emblem was also draped over the statue's face. And not only is the school going after the students, but the FBI is also investigating the incident as well. No state charges are forthcoming, by the way, said the Lafayette County District Attorney, because Mississippi's hate crime laws only apply when there's a separate underlying crime. The statue wasn't actually damaged, so prosecutors aren't pursuing vandalism charges. God forbid there was vandalism charges. This particular frat also is consistently in trouble for drinking and hazing, and that's actually what they're being suspended for not the noose. Uh, a spokesman said the closure is not a result of what happened with the Meredith statue, but the Meredith statue precipitated the intensive review of how they conduct business. And by the way, in case, I don't know if any of you were in the Greek system, but they are referring to Sigma Phi. Okay. So it's kind of interesting that they, so they did the right thing by banning the fraternity. They, unbelievably, kids have not been kicked out of the school, right? They're but, just kicked out of the fraternity, and then the fraternity kicked out of the school. But right? they're not even they're not even saying that it's because of this. No, that's the interesting part, ah. right? Like they're saying that it almost sounds like they're apologetic. Yes. Right. Like, yes. I mean, we kicked the fraternity out, but it was for the drinking. It was for the drinking. I mean, it wasn't for the. Well, for, what's right. wrong? What's, what's, the, point? Yeah, what's yeah, the point? Yeah. Why not? Who were they news? afraid of offending? The right. Grand Wizard? No, but that's the thing, though. Obviously, Thank they you. were afraid of offending yes. some people, right? I yeah. think that there would have been maybe some alumni who were offended, et cetera. And you think of this as ancient history. He's the first black guy to go to Ole Miss and stuff. It was in 1962. He's still alive. He's yeah. 80 years old. He's, he, oh, he's really? living somewhere. So now he's thinking, oh, some kids put a noose around the neck of my statue. Yeah. And so it's not that long ago. Yeah. So are there people around who would be offended that these, if these kids got kicked out of the school, which they still haven't, or even just kicked out of their fraternity right. because they're like, I mean, come on, dude. Of course they were going to put a noose around the black guy's statue. I mean, what are you, now you're going to punish him for that? So, you know, so they, it seems like they're tiptoeing around it. Yeah, well, yeah. this is like, you know, so where that, that white supremacist just went and shot those people because he thought they were Jewish. Turned out they were Christians, yeah. right? Right. So shot the, two Methodists. Two Methodists. So the, yeah. ma so the mayor of the town, yeah. I don't know if you remember what he said, was he was like, yeah, you know, I kind of agree with a lot of stuff he said. Like yeah, shooting yeah. them was too much. He's wait, like, yeah, wait, he wait, goes, wait, I kind wait. of yeah. agree with some of the stuff he said, but I don't, he really said that. You're referring that. to yeah. the Jewish Community Center and yeah. the yes. Valley Vessel. And yeah. they're like, well, why would he say that? Oh, it's because he has to get reelected and he knows there's a bunch of racists who are going to vote for him. So the, and, and anti-Semites in that case. And so look, that, that's the thing. The that mistake. happened in my hometown, by the way. Really? That's really? why, and oh. I didn't hear that. Oh, you mean in oh. Kansas? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and many oh, of my friends yeah. were there, and that's right. They're, they're seeking mm -hmm. trauma counseling, and it's it was a whole horrible thing. Wow. Now, so, obviously. so what's the mistake we make is the one that everybody makes, which is just thinking from your own perspective. We all grew up as non-racists, right? As non, you know, bigots, bigots or yeah. etc. Right? So like, I didn't grow up that way. Oh uh, well, maybe. <laughs> okay. I know. All right. So that's an interesting perspective. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll get to that in a second. So whenever people do stuff like this or the shooting, I'm always like, how could you hate people so yeah. much? People you don't know based on some random thing like what religion or nationality they are. Are you going to go murder them, right? How, and in this case, of course, a much less offense because nobody got hurt here. But how do you like? How did you grow up in an environment where you thought it was like super cool? To, to do like a far uh, lynching, hanging of this guy because he integrated the universe. I can't, my mind can't comprehend that because yeah. I didn't grow up like that. But a lot of people did grow up like that and they're among us. Yeah, yeah. The, so uh, those, these, go ahead. Well, that's why I think this one's particularly interesting because I will always, and we've done it many times on this show, uh, I will always defend college stupidity, almost to the nth degree. Yeah. I can't think of one story we've ever done about something mm -hmm. stupid at college, about drunk, drinking or drugs, or sex even for the most part, short of rape or something, that I haven't defended, the, but I can't imagine. That's what I was trying to think. What, how did this fraternity, how did, if it was four kids or six or 10, how did they sit there and think, this is what we're gonna this do? This is a good idea. I, I just, I genuinely can't, it, it, like, it's like it can't get in my brain. Yeah. And I would o always defend these kids to do, you know, with the rioting that we yes. covered last week in uh, Santa Barbara. I was yeah. defending them because it's college and kids are stupid and they're rebelling and they're gonna not do it five years from now. I don't but this is, this is off the charts. Yeah, you know what, they might be. <sighs> I'm sure they're, you know, they all have a racism in them, right, a certain amount, but 
the, you know, it, it, it sounds a lot like it probably was 50%. Boy, this is really going to piss some people off, right? And there's a oh, thrill right. involved the, with that. So, man, even if you don't agree with the sentiment that you're expressing, if you can get under someone's skin, it's like trolls on the Internet. They just say shit to, you know, it's like, you know, pulling your pants down in traffic to get attention. So right. I think it's kind of like that kind of a thing, hmm. uh, more more so than they just hate. Because they, they might not even know any black people, right? You know what I mean? Like, I grew up, I knew very few black people until I got... I don't know, in college, you know, even then only a handful of black people. So I didn't know many black people. When I was young, I lived in a, you know, southwest side of Chicago. It was very racist, you know, and just like Southie in Boston. So it took a while for me. You know, my parents weren't racist, so that was a very good, they set a good example that way. And, uh, but I had to, uh, you know, like, uh, get the racism out of me, you know, like it's bred into you in the community. And then as you get older, you're like, because uh, we used to fight with the black kids in our neighborhood, right? So there was a dividing line. We would actually fight them. And I remember one time I was fighting this black kid just because he was black. And I just remember, like, I was punching him, and I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Like, this seems yeah. shitty. Like, I don't know, I was in sixth or seventh grade. Yeah. And I was like, ah, this feels shitty. And so I just never did it again. I just stopped and uh, I got, we, but I had gotten, I've been jumped by black kids in this neighborhood and stuff like that. And so uh, you could see how you could become, and then everybody in my neighborhood, they had the white flight mentality. They were mm -hmm. afraid of blacks. Mm -hmm. They're gonna come into my neighborhood yeah. and they're gonna, so like if you sold your house to a black, I remember a lady yelling at my brother because he was gonna sell his house on the next block. And she goes, if you sell your house to an N word, I'll hunt you down, you know? Hey. And so that's how, so this is where I, <laughs> Hunt you down to show you about my tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so that's where it comes. But in all, so, but yeah, go so it, it's interesting because it's the power of brainwashing. You know, I, I say this all the yes. time when it comes to religion and it comes to how we feel about others and what we're taught by our parents. And, and you know, I always use the innocuous example of we get taught to eat with a fork and knife, right? We don't think about it, but we got taught that when we were kids and we do it forever, right? right. And so you get taught these things and oftentimes right. you don't think about it and that's just how you are. And these kids got taught at some point that yeah. this was a funny thing. I remember at Penn when we were going to school, there was this obnoxious college uh, football frat that used to yell at Indian kids uh, like, hey, go back to Mexico. And they thought that was hilarious. Like, ha ha, you're Mexican and yeah. But the, uh, but I, I knew guys that had gotten yelled at and it really hurt. And you know, and they, it really enraged them, right? And so it's one thing that they got taught this way, yada yada, but there's a black kid that goes to University of Mississippi who I'm positive, like felt uh, both intimidated, threatened, and, and hurt. Angry, yeah. And hurt by this, right? Sure. And so it's no excuse that they're knuckleheads that got you know, at some point, That's like a, when yeah. you become an adult and you're going to college, it's time to get beyond being a knucklehead. And if you didn't get beyond it before you put the noose on the statue, maybe you'll get beyond it once no. we throw you out of college. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and Jimmy, like you said earlier, you know, when you said something that might have been going through their head is, oh, this is really going to piss off the school. I. I don't totally understand that because then wouldn't you be doing some, something against the school instead of against a race of people? I mean, isn't that when you just egg shit or like throw a trophy through a glass case? You don't put a noose around a statue's neck. Right. We wouldn't be talking about them if they threw an egg through a thing. Yeah, that no, is no, also no, true. It, I think Jimmy's right about that. I, don't get me wrong. I think it's 50% because they thought it was funny and that's how they grew up. And it's 50% because look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm so high. You know what I'll do? I'll do one better than you. Mm -hmm. What's the most outrageous thing I can think yes. of? Oh, remember this cafe? famous guy who uh -huh. integrated the schools, well, we'll do the news. Think about a news, uh -huh. like a lynching. That's really outrageous. And then everybody will talk about us as we work at McDonald's.